Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, in this uh, short tutorial video, we are going to discuss about the forward and inverse kinematics of a simple RP robot, Revolut Prismatic Planar Robot. So, without further ado, let us uh, jump into the problem. Okay, so this is basically a um, RP robot. So we have one Revolut joint here, which is hinged as you can see. And then we have another prismatic joint at this point. So this R2 length can be varied. That's why I have put asterisks here. R1 is fixed, which is this length. Uh, but the R2 can uh, move inside and move out as well. So this is a uh, variable. So, so this is the theta one, uh, that is the revolute joint. And uh, basically the first step is to assign the frame of uh, reference for all the joint and for the tooltip. Uh, so let's put the frame of reference for all the joints. So this is the way we can put the frame of reference as you know that because this is a uh, revolute join so uh, this should be the z0 should be its axis of rotation which is coming out of the screen and this is a prismatic join so z1 should be along the axis of translation and z1 uh, sorry z2 this is supposed to be z Two, yes z2 follows z1 now for the first x0 we can put it in any direction so I have chosen it to put on this direction which is on the screen and if you use this uh, right hand rule then uh, you can have the y-axis in this direction okay and for the case of x1 as you know that x1 should be perpendicular to both z0 and z1 so you can use the right hand rule as well and you can point your uh, thumb towards z0 and your index towards z1 so your middle finger will be pointing towards x1 so this is the x1 and x2 should be perpendicular to both z2 and z1 because they are collinear so that's why x2 follows x1 okay but as you can see there is the second rule that the x1 should be intersecting both z0 and z1 which is not the case because z0 is coming out of the screen and z1 is along the screen uh, sorry along this direction so x1 is no way going to intersect both z1 and z0 so that's why we have to shift this frame to the previous frame so now the problem is solved so now x1 is intersecting both z0 and z1 okay so next step is to fill in the dh table so this is the way we can fill in the dh table these are the rules and if you follow these rules then your dh table for zero frame zero to one and one to two would be like this so this is the dh table and just you have to follow these uh, rules and once you have the dh table then you know the homogeneous transformation matrix is this one and you can put all the values you can put all the values of um, for 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 this cos theta i sine theta i and cos alpha i sine alpha i ai all these values you can put here on this matrix and then if you put these values then you will get a0 to 1 as follows and a1 to 2 as follows and your final transformation matrix should be the multiplication of a0 1 and a1 2 
and this is the final transformation matrix so this uh, is uh, can be checked back with the geometric solution as well as you can see here so this is the x-axis direction which is r1 plus r2 cos theta 1 and this is the y-axis direction which is r1 plus r2 sine theta 1 so this point with respect to this original frame of reference x0 y0 z0 so that means this is correct and z obviously this is a planar robot so there's no uh, variation of z axis okay so now the, let's see the inverse kinematic solution so inverse kinematic solution you have two equation now x equals to r1 plus r2 cos theta 1 and y equals to r1 plus r2 sine theta 1 if you square these two equations and sum them up then you can get basically r2 equals to a square root of x square plus y square minus r1 now to get the value of theta 1 we are going to use an, uh, a spatial function called arctan 2 not arctan because arctan does not consider the sign of x and y but on the other hand arctan 2 is a spatial function that considers the sign of x and y so the formula for arctan 2 is as follows they follow arctan but uh, they have different condition if x equals to greater than zero that means it is you know, either in the first quadrant or in the uh, fourth quadrant then it will follow directly the arc 10 2 uh, sorry arc 10 and but if it is in the uh, second quadrant then it will be arc 10 plus y by x plus pi uh, for the case of x negative but y is positive so that means it is in the second quadrant and if it is in the third quadrant um, so in this case it would be arctan y by x minus pi and special case for x equals to zero uh, then you will have pi by two and x equals to zero but y equals to less than zero then it is negative pi by two and this case is undefined because the denominator will have zero so this is the way you can solve for the theta one depending on what is the coordinate of your x and y so that's all for this uh, problem thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh